Uh, my name is Hans Gerdes. I'm uh, one of the gastroenterologists here at Memorial Hospital. And uh, I want to thank Elena and the, the, the group for uh, inviting me to participate in this. Um, I've uh, been asked to uh, address the topic of immune modulation vascular targeted photodynamic therapy in esophagogastric cancer. Uh, and I'd like to mention that this is a uh, combined effort between uh, multiple groups at Memorial Hospital, uh, spearheaded initially by Jonathan Coleman, uh, who has a lab that studies photodynamic therapy in the, ur the urogenital tract. Um, and of course, our interest in uh, photodynamic therapy in the esophageal cancer. Uh, but also, uh, our efforts are uh, combined with uh, those at the Weizmann Institute in Israel, uh, where Avigdor Schertz, who was the discoverer of a new photosensitizing agent uh, that has now been brought to uh, human uh, clinical use. And so I'll outline uh, much of this. And as I'm uh, I want to show my disclosures. I have no uh, ties to industry financially, uh, but the, uh, some of the work that I'm going to show you has been sponsored by uh, a philanthropic organization, the Thompson Fo Family Foundation, and some also by Steba uh, Biotech, uh, which is a pharmaceutical firm in, in um, France. Uh, I'd uh, like to first of all review the outcomes and symptoms uh, of advanced esophagogastric cancer very briefly, as much of this has been covered. Uh, I'll describe what photodynamic therapy is and then introduce the new approach to photodynamic therapy with this new agent, which we call vascular targeted photodynamic therapy. Uh, and then uh, show you some of the preclinical studies of VTP uh, in animals, uh, and then uh, describe our study here, uh, which uh, according to the theme of this uh, whole program, incorporates this science into multimodality clinical care. So esophageal cancer uh, in most patients and esophagogastric junction cancers uh, usually present with locally advanced or advanced disease. Approximately 65% of people will, at the time of diagnosis, have metastatic disease to at least regional lymph nodes, if not distant metastases. Uh, median survival uh, in most uh, chemotherapy trials of patients with metastatic disease ranges from 9 to 11 months, with one-year survival rates of 37 to 47 percent. Newer approaches of targeted therapy, uh, which uh, will be uh, described in more detail uh, th this morning and this afternoon, offer some hope of improved median survival as high as 17 months and two-year survival rates of 37 percent. And immune therapy, uh, which uh, will also be discussed later by uh, our colleague from Japan, Dr. Shitara, uh, offers the hope of another effective alternative, and I will touch a little bit on this. Uh, so esophageal cancer uh, generally, as I mentioned, at the time of presentation is already fairly advanced, so dysphagia and weight loss are the prominent symptoms of 80 to 90 percent of patients. Uh, palliating esophageal cancer has been a challenge for many years. Photodynamic therapy was studied 25 years ago and approved by the FDA using a photosensitizing agent known as porphyrin sodium, followed by laser light application in the esophageal uh, uh, lumen right where the point of obstruction is. Uh, this results in local t tumor destruction and reopening of the lumen so patients can swallow. Unfortunately, this particular photosensitizer was associated with a very long half-life in the body and was associated, therefore, with prolonged skin photosensitivity, which would pay, put patients at risk of severe sunburns uh, for up to about six weeks if they went outdoors in the sunlight. Uh, it was, became unpopular for that reason, but also because esophageal stents became available and sort of supplanted it in terms of managing dysphagia. Uh, the vascular targeted photodynamic therapy uh, with this new agent that I've mentioned, which was discovered at the Weizmann Institute, uh, called WST11. Uh, it's a bacterial chlorophyll derivative, uh, and uh, it is associated with very rapid clearance from the body uh, and results in reduced skin photosensitivity. Now, this, this drug was identified and discovered by a, uh, a, a plant biochemist at the Weizmann Institute, and he's be become very uh, involved in, in pushing this, uh, uh, th th this new approach, and, uh, and much of his research, which I'll show you, uh, relative to this particular agent, really uh, 
points to new concepts that are being considered in cancer therapy, uh, in particular immune activation. Uh, light activation of this drug uh, seems to take effect uh, through tumor vascular destruction, resulting in anoxia or ischemia with nutrient deprivation, and this leads to tumor necrosis, largely through release, release of uh, reactive oxygen species and nitrous oxide um, molecules. Uh, this results in local uh, tumor destruction, but also uh, through immune effects uh, at the tumor and then systemically seems to have a, a potential of uh, destroying distant metastases. And I'll show you some animal studies that suggest that these immune effects can be augmented with a variety of drugs such as immunosuppressants and checkpoint inhibitors. So the idea is that tumor cells generally protect themselves uh, from our immune system through a variety of means. And uh, you'll probably hear uh, through, through uh, today and into tomorrow how um, uh, oncologists and immunologists are taking advantage of uh, these, um, what we now understand of these mechanisms to try and uh, release some of the breaks that the uh, cancer cell places uh, and what the body places on uh, destruction of these tumors. Uh, I have to apologize, uh, this uh, system does not have quick time and so this video clip uh, cannot play. But uh, it demonstrates a, a, a mouse earlobe that has a tumor implanted into it. And uh, with this uh, video micrograph, you can see, uh, as Dr. Reiner showed in some of his presentation, uh, how you can see the blood vessels coming to the tumor. And fo following photodynamic, uh, photodynamic therapy with this drug, uh, you get complete uh, elimination, uh, blockage of the vascular flow to these tumors, resulting in ischemic destruction. Now, some of the preclinical studies uh, have been done in mouse, rats, and pigs, and I'll show you some of them. They demonstrate that this uh, treatment is relatively safe and uh, effective in solid, solid and hollow organ treatments. Animal studies have also shown the immune-mediated effects against the cancer, uh, and I, I'd like to introduce this concept of abscopal effect, and I'll, mention, I'll describe it a little bit more in detail in a few minutes, uh, but I'm sure this will be discussed further by some of my other colleagues later. And then there are ongoing human studies that have shown the safety and efficacy in solid organs. And this, this treatment with this drug has been approved in Europe and in Central America for treating localized prostate cancer, uh, but not yet available in the United States. And there are very limited data in solid organs. And so this is a, an example of one of the preclinical studies that was done at the Weizmann Institute. Uh, and what you're seeing is a, is a whole mount of uh, esophagus on the left and trachea of a mouse that uh, was treated with WST11 VTP. And this is an untreated mouse esophagus and stomach, just to show what it, it should look like. Uh, and this is a mouse that has been treated and at 72 hours uh, is sacrificed to demonstrate that uh, this is the normal part of esophagus. This is the part of the esophagus that was exposed to the laser light. And you get tissue destruction. This is all necrosis of the superficial lasers, the esophagus, and there's inflammation going all the way through uh, to the trachea, but no perforation. This is at 72 hours. And then this is at 40 days, uh, a mouse that had treatment and that was allowed to survive and recover. And you can see complete re, uh, growth of normal epithelium, healing of the uh, tissue destruction uh, that is uh, caused by the VTP. Similar treatments uh, were done with additional agents, particularly with Avastin, to demonstrate that uh, even mouse treated with Avastin can safely tolerate uh, this kind of treatment. Uh, here at Memorial Hospital, we tested this uh, measure with, in pigs, and this is an uh, X-ray image of a pig undergoing VTP treatment. Uh, this is an endoscope placed in the esophagus, and this area of the esophagus is treated with, this, uh, with the laser light after the pig has been infused with the drug WST11. And uh, multiple pigs were treated and followed over periods of time. And this is one of the pigs that had the, the sort of a, the worst uh, result where a, a minor stricture was uh, seen to develop uh, in the area of treatment. Uh, overall, most of the pigs did well, tolerated, were able to eat and actually continue to gain weight. Uh, in further studies done at the Weizmann, uh, uh, where mouse tumor models were used, uh, they were able to demonstrate that the, not only is VTP effective in destroying the
the local tumor, but uh, through uh, immune modulation that you could accomplish uh, both cellular and humoral uh, immunity actions. And, uh, and I won't show you the results of all of this, but uh, importantly, uh, one of the factors that they demonstrated is that if you implanted a, a, a mouse, a, a tumor mouse, tumor in a nude mouse, uh, VTP had no effect, uh, indicating that the immune system was important uh, for the VTP effect. How, in addition, in a, a mouse that was not a nude mouse, a, a BALB-C mouse uh, with a competent immune system that had a tumor implanted and was treated with VTP uh, and effectively eliminated the tumor, uh, Rechallenging the mouse with another tumor was uh, de demonstrated that they had a lasting effect from the initial uh, treatment. And so just to show you some of these uh, uh, results, uh, they, they used a mouse mammary tumor model called the, the 4T1 and implanted it sub subcutaneously in the side of the mouse uh, and then it gave them cytoxan as an immune modulator at low dose prior to VTP and then followed them over time. And this is the schema of how it occurred. Uh, implanted the mouse. Uh, as, the tumor, uh, as the tumor was beginning to grow in the side of the mouse, they also implanted uh, tumor through the mouse's uh, uh, tail vein uh, to uh, uh, demonstrate uh, metastatic disease as well. And following uh, tumor growth, they were uh, pretreated with cytoxan, and the local tumor in the side was treated with VTP, and then they were followed over time. And these curves demonstrate what happens to the mice if they are treated with VTP alone, if they're treated with cytoxan alone, they generally, uh, the tumors grow rapidly and the mice die. Those that are treated with, uh, pre-treated with cytoxan followed by VTP lived longer, and 30% of them uh, survived a long period of time uh, with uh, 30% overall survival, and 60% of animals in whom they had successful eradication of the primary tumor with this combination therapy did not develop metastatic disease. This study was duplicated here at Memorial Hospital in jo Jonathan Coleman's lab, this pub paper published recently by Matthew O'Shaughnessy, uh, where they used a Renka uh, renal cancer cell model uh, implanted into the side of a mouse. This, model, this tumor model actually uh, develops uh, spontaneous lung metastases. And uh, following implantation, uh, they treated the mice with uh, VTP uh, with pretreatment with an anti-PD-1 inhibitor, uh, which is specific to mice, and followed them over time with this kind of uh, time schema. And what's shown here is what these t the kidney of these uh, mice looks like. Uh, where the double dots demonstrates the center of necrosis within a growing tumor in a control mouse. And the mice that were treated only with antibodies uh, to PD-1, but no VTP, they had growth of tumor. And the mice that was treated with only VTP, uh, there was some central destruction of the tumor, but there, the tumor continued to grow at the periphery. And then the mice treated with VTP combined with the anti-PD-1 inhibitors, there was complete destruction of the tumor. And this, this demonstrates the growth patterns of the kidneys uh, in the, the mice uh, according to this uh, schema. And then when they followed them for a long period of time, those mice that had a combination of VTP and, and the PD-1 inhibitors survived the longest. So this demonstrates what we call the Epscopal effect, which is uh, uh, described from the paper from uh, Mike Postel uh, that uh, uh, was a case report of, of one patient with uh, metastatic melanoma who had been on treatment uh, and was treated with radiation therapy and is described as uh, a rare phenomenon of tumor regression at a site distant from the primary site of radiotherapy. And this has been described for, for many years now as a rare case reports of patients treated with radiotherapy and uh, uh, the assumption is that it's an immunologic phenomenon that's resulting in the, the destruction of the tumor at distant sites following radiation therapy. And this is the, uh, the image from this paper that demonstrates a patient who had metastatic melanoma to multiple sites, had been on immunotherapy with ipilimumab, uh, which is a CTLA-4 inhibitor. And uh, these, these uh, CT scan images demonstrate the several sites of disease in the peri-vertebral uh, peri, uh, 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 area in the chest, 
as well as the hilum of the right lung, uh, and splenic metastases as well. And the patient received radiation therapy to the paraspinal mass right at this point uh, for palliation of, of pain, and then subsequent follow-up, uh, there was noted to be demonstration of regression of the splenic and hepatic metastases, uh, to, to which the only uh, explanation is that is, this is an episcopal effect that was triggered by the radiation therapy uh, from prior immuno immunotherapy with ipilimumab. Now, to demonstrate the safety of WST11, uh, there have been multiple studies in prostate cancer uh, in the United States, in Canada, Europe, uh, demonstrating the safety and efficacy in prostate cancer. There are very limited studies in luminal tumors, in cholangiocarcinoma, uh, endobronchial cancers, uh, very few patients treated. And so our study, uh, which I'll describe now, uh, is a uh, phase one uh, study of this drug, WST11, VTP, uh, of um, therapy for esophagogastric cancer patients with moderate to severe dysplasia. And this is a combined effort of uh, uh, our team, the gastroenterology service, the medical oncology service, uh, in conjunction with uh, the rest of the work group in Jonathan, Jonathan Coleman's lab and the Weizmann Institute. Um, the primary objective of the study is to determine the maximally tolerated laser light fluency dose of, uh, la of uh, the laser light exposure to the esophagus for VTP treatment and malignant obstruction due to esophagogastric cancers using a, s a fixed dose of the drug, uh, WST11. And so we uh, increase the dose of laser light or fluency rate of the laser light, gradually increasing it for uh, every cohort of three patients uh, looking for toxicity. And once we uh, identify a, a safe dose, uh, then we'll uh, merge that into an immune therapy study. But uh, within this study, we're also looking at objective response rates uh, in addition to the toxicities, uh, relief of dysphagia, histologic tissue response, and uh, tissue correlates of immune response. Uh, and this is the schema. Patients are identified. Uh, they are treated uh, with WST11 VTP during endoscopy uh, with increasing do laser light doses in groups of three. We assess them at multiple time points for response. We collect tissue and blood looking for uh, immune ac activation. Uh, and once we identify the optimal laser light dose, uh, we'll then modify the study uh, to include an immune checkpoint inhibitor uh, and see what the com combined uh, uh, treatment effect will be. The immune correlates uh, are, as I mentioned, blood and tissue. They're collected at multiple time points. Uh, maximal tox uh, toxicity dose of laser light will be identified, uh, and patients uh, will be treated with uh, an immune checkpoint inhibitor, which is yet to be determined. And uh, the main goal of the second phase will be to look for that abscopal effect. So far, we have treated eight patients in the first part of the study uh, in the past year, uh, three in, in uh, the first two laser light doses of 150 and 200 milliwatts per centimeter. And uh, we're, so far, uh, we've seen no dose-limiting toxicities, and uh, we've seen some modest improvement in dysphagia which, uh, in a few patients, which has lasted up to about six weeks. This is an example of a patient treated uh, at the second dose cohort, uh, demonstrating obstruction uh, five days after treatment and uh, following debridement of this uh, necrotic tissue in opening of the lumen, and an, an esophagram on the same patient uh, demonstrating an improvement in the lumen diameter uh, as coincident with improvement in dysphagia. So I'd like to close, and in summary, um, I think I've demonstrated to you that esophagogastric cancer outcomes remain poor. Symptoms uh, continue to be a, a challenge. Uh, vascular targeted photodynamic therapy is a new treatment modality which seems to work uh, through immune-mediated uh, tumor killing, at least in animals. Uh, the preclinical studies show that this is uh, effective in not only local but systemic uh, tumor destruction. Human clinical trials and immune-modulated modul VTP offer some hope for a new approach uh, to the control of, adva of advanced uh, esophagogastric cancer. Uh, thank you for your attention.